Hi guys, this is Cisco Biology. As suggested by the name of my channel, this channel is mainly made for biology lesson. But today we are going to learn some physics in order to fully understand this chapter. Alright, so most of us already know that breathing is, a, is actually an action that our body take in the oxygen and remove the carbon dioxide, am I right? But the thing is, in our body, we don't have any machine, we don't have any pump. How can we take in the oxygen and remove the carbon dioxide from our body? So, today we are going to touch on this topic. Now, look at the screen. We have two containers. Now, right here, we have two containers, container A and container B. So, both of these containers, they contain a par gas particles inside. So to make things simple, we are going to put five particles in the container. Container B also has five part A particles. Now, both of these containers, they are having the same amount of gas particles they are under the same condition, which have the same temperature, same volume. All these particles in container A and container B, they are moving randomly. So when they move, they will collide with each other. And some of them, they will collide with the wall and bounce back. So same goes to the particles in container B. They will move randomly and collide with each other. Now, what happens if the particles collide with the wall of the container? Let's zoom in this diagram here. Right, and right here, we have the wall of the container. And then we have these little particles. And these little particles, it hits the wall and then bounce back. Am I right? Now, what happens if the particles hit the walls of the container? It will exert a force on the wall. Now, you try to imagine if we have a lot of particles that are hitting the wall through the random movement, it will exert a lot of forces on the wall of the container. So from here, it will generate or create the pressure. So this is how the air pressure is formed. The higher the coefficient, the higher the force exerted on the wall of the container and the higher the pressure. So let's make a note here. So from here we know that higher coefficient between the wall and the particles, it will exert a lot of forces on the wall. So higher forces lead to higher pressure in the area. Okay, so let's go back to this diagram. You can see that in container A, we have five particles which are moving randomly and part uh, container B, five particles that are moving randomly. And since the volume of container A and the volume of container B, they are the same. So, supposedly, they are having the same rate of collision. And we can say that A is having the same pressure compared to B. Now, what happens if we change the volume of the container? Let's look at another diagram here. So again, we have the container A and container B. Same thing, we are having the same amount of particles in a few minutes later. However, this time we are going to change the volume of container A. We are trying to make this container become larger. Now, what we can see here is container A is much more larger compared to container B. And the space for the particles to move around is larger. So when there is more space, 
the chances for the particles to hit the wall of the container is lower. When the chances for the particles to hit the wall is lower, the collision will become lower. The force that exerted to the wall is become lower. And at the end, the pressure in this area will be lower as well. So from here, we can say that A is having lower pressure compared to B. B has higher pressure. Now, what happened next? In physics, the air particles in a higher pressure area will always flow to the lower pressure area. So from here, the particles in B container will start to go to the container A until a balanced pressure between these two containers are achieved. So from here, we understand one thing. Let's make a note here. When you have higher volume, the pressure in the area is lower and then the air particles will move from high pressure area to low pressure area. So this is the key concept that you need to know before you study the mechanism of breathing in human and other animals. Now, what can you see here? You can see that the diaphragm contracted and moving downwards. The purpose of this section is to increase the volume in your thoracic cavity. When you increase the volume of your thoracic cavity, you decrease the pressure of your thoracic cavity and then the air particles from the external environment which has higher pressure will flow into the lower pressure area which is our thoracic cavity so this is the mechanism of us breathing in the oxygen so guys, I hope you guys love this video and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!